Hey guys, this is Shubhash Mishra, your test coach. Today we are going to discuss a very important interview question. What is the difference between functional and non-functional testing? This is very basic software testing interview question. Interviewer just want to understand how much you are clear in fundamental concepts. I will try to explain you in the easiest way. Listen it carefully. Okay. So let's start. So the very first thing you need to understand what is functional testing, right? So functional testing is testing the functionality of a software or an application under test. What it means? When you are testing an application, you expect it should work in certain way and you verify that. So basically you test the functionality of that application. If I will give you an example, you are testing a login functionality of any website like facebook.com. So when you enter your username and password and click on login button, then you expect you should able to login into the Facebook and you should see your profile. So here you are testing the functionality, how it works. So how your software works. So functional testing is testing the functionality of a software. Similarly, if there are new features getting added to your application, you need to test that. If that feature is working fine or not. That is again functional testing. Then we will try to understand different types of functional testing. First we will see smoke testing. So why we do smoke testing? What is smoke testing? We need to understand that, right? So smoke testing is performed on the initial software build to check whether the critical functionalities are working fine or not. So as to carry out further extensive testing. So when QA gets a build to test, first we need to check if that will qualifies for in-depth testing or not. So QA tries to test the major functionalities and if it is working fine, then smoke test pass and further test continues. If smoke test fails, we can disqualify the build and ask for a new build with proper fix. So here both developer and QA will save time. So you do not have to test it the complete flow as long as the critical functionalities are not working. Okay, so that is smoke testing. Then we will see what is sanity testing and sanity testing is also part of functionality testing. So sanity testing is performed on a stable software build which underwent small changes in the code or functionality. In sanity testing, a specific functionality or a bug which is fixed is tested to check whether the functionality is working fine and see if there are no other issues due to the changes in the related components. Okay, So that is sanity testing. Now we will understand integration testing. So integration testing is again part of functional testing. So integration testing is performed when two or more functions or components of the software are integrated to form a system. Basically it checks the correct functioning of the software when the components are merged as a single unit. So we go for the integration testing only after the functional testing is completed. Okay. So once the individual functionality of a software is completed, then we go for integration testing. So one example of integration testing is if you are testing Gmail application and you have logged in through user A and you are sending email to user B, then what you will do? You will first you will log in as user A and then you will send email to user B. Then again you will log into, log into Gmail using user B and then you will check whether you have received that email or not. So you are doing the complete integration testing here. From one part you are sending email and in the another part you are checking whether you have received that email or not. So that is your integration testing. Then we have regression testing. So regression testing is carried out to ensure that the existing functionality is working fine and there are no side effects of any new change or enhancement done in the application. In other words, regression testing checks to see if new defects were introduced in previously existing functionality. Okay. 
for example there is a software where you are doing the calculation like the existing features are addition subtraction and multiplication now you have added a new feature that is division so when you will do the regression testing definitely you will do the testing for division but you also need to make sure that all the existing features like addition subtraction multiplication is also working fine with the new feature division so that is regression testing okay then we will see user acceptance testing in user acceptance testing the application is tested based on the user's comfort and acceptance by considering their ease of use the actual end users or the clients are given a trial version to be used in their office setup to check if the software is working as per their requirements in a real environment okay so this testing is carried out before the final launch and is also performed as beta testing or end user testing okay so that's all about functional testing so what are the different types of functional testing smoke testing sanity testing integration testing regression testing user acceptance testing all these testings are part of functional testing now we will see what is non functional testing right so non functional testing is a type of testing to check the non functional aspects of a software application so what are the non functional aspects non functional aspects means you are checking the performance you are checking the usability you are checking the reliability okay so you need to check the non functional aspects of the software application that is non functional testing in simple words you can say how well the software performs is non functional testing okay so non functional testing is performed after the functional testing then you can ask me why why non functional testing is performed after the functional testing because in functional testing first we check the basic features are working fine or not for an application if basic features are not working then what is the point to test performance and all for that application so once functional testing is completed we start non functional testing okay few examples of non functional testing are verify how many users can simultaneously use the application second example will be verify the application is compatible with different devices like mobile phone laptop tablet different operating system different browsers okay you can verify with different different devices one more example is verify the security of application like customers credit card or debit card information are encrypted and secure okay one more example i can say verify how quickly your application is loading if you are testing a website the response time is very important right we should see how fast your website is loading okay so all these are non functional testing okay one more thing the non functional test are carried out according to the requirements defined by the client okay so usually client defines like this this much fast i want my website right so those things comes from the client okay so again we have different types of non functional testing so we'll see what are those okay first we'll see performance testing okay so performance testing is a non functional testing right so by the name you can understand performance testing is done to determine the performance of a system in terms of responsiveness and stability under a certain load okay and there are different types of again performance testing so first we will see load testing so what is load testing load testing is performed to test the behavior of the application under a specific expected load it determines how the software application behaves while being accessed by multiple users simultaneously okay for example an e-commerce website is not able to handle 20000 plus users during a festival offer so what is that exact response time it is taking when multiple users are using it okay then we will see the what is stress testing okay so in stress testing the application is stressed with an extra workload to check if it works efficiently and is able to handle the stress as per the requirement so the goal of stress testing is to understand where exactly the system will break and how much stress the system can take so think about an e-commerce website 
where load will be high during an offer or festival season. So, we should know how much load the application can take. Okay. One more key thing, uh, the difference between load testing and stress testing. Load testing does not break the system. We just find what is the response time. Okay. Where stress testing tries to break the system by testing with lot of data. Okay. Then we will see what is endurance testing. So, in endurance testing, the durability of the software is tested with a repeated and consistent flow of load in a scalable pattern. The main purpose of endurance testing is to ensure that the application is capable enough to handle extended load without any deterioration of response time. Then we have volume testing. Okay. So, volume testing is done to analyze the system performance by increasing the volume of data in the database. With the help of volume testing, the impact on response time and system behavior can be studied when exposed to a high volume of data. Okay. For example, you are testing a movie website where lot of users are downloading the same movie in the same time. Okay. So, the volume is very high here. Right. Then we will see one more type of non-functional testing that is usability testing. Okay. So, in usability testing, the user interface is tested for its ease of use and see how user friendly it is. Okay. So, again usability testing is also known as user experience testing, like how the user is experiencing the product or the application or the software. Okay. So, a small set of target end users use software application to expose usability defects. Usability testing mainly focuses on users ease of using application, flexibility of application to handle controls and ability of application to meet its objectives. Okay. So, that is all about usability testing. Then we have security testing. So, security testing is to check how secure the software is regarding data over the network from malicious attacks. So, in security testing, the system's readiness to fight back against any external or internal attacks is tested. It makes sure that only authorized and authenticated users are allowed to access the software and users' data is secure and available to them whenever required. Okay. So, we have lot of automation tools to perform this security testing, okay. also performance testing and all. Okay, mainly we use automation tools to perform all this non-functional testing. Now you understand the basic concepts of functional and non-functional testing. So it will be very easy for you now to find out what are the difference between functional testing and non-functional testing. So let's see what are the basic difference. Okay, so the very first thing is functional testing is testing the functionality of a software or how the software works, right? So, that is what I have told in the initial point, right? How the software works that we perform in our functionality testing, right? Or what is the exact functionality of that software? We test that if it is working as per that or not, right? So, that is functionality testing. But what is non-functional testing? Non-functional testing checks the behavior of an application. We check the different behavior of the application. So, that is non-functional testing. Okay. So, functional testing is performed before non-functional testing, whereas non-functional testing starts after functional testing. Okay. So, I already covered this point why functional testing we do first because first we finish all the basic functionality that is the first requirement from the client. We finish that, then we go for the performance or non-functional testing. What are the different non-functional testing, right? We cover that. Then we will move to the next point. Functional testing is based on customer requirements, whereas non-functional testing focuses on customer's expectation. Okay. Now we will move to the next point. Functional testing tests whether the actual result is working according to the expected result, whereas non-functional testing 
checks the response time and speed of the software under specific conditions. This is our performance testing, right? Now we will move to the next one. Functional testing helps to validate the behavior of the application, how exactly it should behave that we test in functional testing whereas in non-functional testing it helps to validate performance of the application right now the next point functional testing is easy to execute by manual testing whereas non-functional testing is bit difficult doing it manually we use automation for that for example you can use jmeter load runner and all for non-functional testing there are a lot of automation tools we will discuss about that in a separate video how to perform non-functional testing through automation okay then the next point is what are the different types of functional testing you do unit testing integration testing system testing acceptance testing regression testing all these are part of functional testing again what are the different types of non-functional testing performance testing in performance testing we learnt about load testing stress testing, volume testing, endurance testing, then we have security testing, usability testing, recovery testing. So, all these are part of non-functional testing. The basic example of functional testing like a login page should have text boxes to enter username and password. This is a very basic functional testing because we expect that that should be the functional. Login page should have the option to enter username and password and maybe finally to submit it. Right. So, that is the functionality of the login page. So, that is the functional testing we do. But if you will consider a non-functional testing, so validate if a login page is getting loaded in 3 seconds. So, we expect the page should load in a 3 seconds of time. If it is exceeding that, then maybe we can report it as a issue because maybe customer want it to load in only in 3 seconds. If it is exceeding more, then the customer experience will not that great. right? So, that is non-functional testing okay so these are the few differences you can explain in your interview hope this video is helpful for you thank you if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section i'll try to explain it please like share and subscribe to my channel